Perfect? Bang on my chest if you think I'm perfect. Go ahead, bang on it. No heart? You gotta have heart. Miles and miles of heart. This is Patchwork Heart Ministries Young Catholics Respond, brought to you by Breadbox Media. Now, here's your host, Bill Snyder. Thanks, Adam, and welcome to the program, everybody. I am Bill Snyder, and it is a pleasure to have you join us wherever you are listening and however you are listening to us. Uh, thank you for listening to Young Catholics Respond. Um, today, my guest is Jeannie Ewing, and Jeannie um, is a Catholic spirituality writer who focuses on the topics of grief, redemptive suffering, and waiting. Um, she his, her favorite words are encounter, encourage, and engage. She wants to meet every single person and make them feel appreciated, valued, and important. Uh, she writes and speaks and is no stranger to Catholic radio uh, and has just an amazing uh, faith journey. So, Jeannie, welcome to the program. Thank you so much for being a part of Young Catholics Respond. Thanks for inviting me, Bill. So on today's program, I want to I want to hear about your personal journey. Um, you know, you've you've had some uh, in, incredible um, incredible heartbreak, uh, and I just want to I just want to kind of capture that story uh, for our listeners. Where do you want me to begin? <laughs> Why don't you start? Why don't you start? You know, I mean, I I know you have some children with some disabilities, and that's really close to. Um, to, to our ministry here, because because I was born with a congenital heart defect. So sure. if you want to start there, that'd be great. Yeah. So I guess just a little bit before that, I've, I'm have i a cradle Catholic. And so um, my husband and I met on a Catholic uh, website, a dating website. And um, I guess we always considered ourselves to be faithful. We went to Mass every Sunday, every Holy Day. We prayed together. We had individual devotions, volunteered for church. And we struggled with some infertility before we were able to get pregnant with Felicity, which is our oldest. She's about seven and a half. And when I had her, you know, I was a first-time mom, and I was kind of like, well, if I say anything's wrong, people are going to think I'm this neurotic stay-at-home mom, which... A lot of the doctors did do that. But the problem was Felicity screamed as if she was in distress all the time, whether I was changing her diaper, giving her a bath, feeding her, um, changing her clothes. If she'd go outside and it was windy or rainy, it was like she would scream like she was in pain. And I just thought, this is not normal. And so it wasn't really until she was over a year old and she still wasn't even crawling that someone actually paid attention to me and said, you know, maybe she needs a referral for physical therapy. She started that. The physical therapist believed she had something called sensory processing disorder, which my husband and I had never heard of. And so we investigated that a little bit and read about how um, the brain processes information, not just the five senses, but there are some internal senses that have to do with balance and coordination. And we realized that she was just struggling with filtering the sensory information that she didn't need and then um, being able to differentiate between those and then what she did need. And she was overwhelmed all the time. So we started occupational therapy. So um, the first couple of years of Felicity's life were really tough. I mean, I was adjusting to being a mom and then she just struggled with everything. She struggled with daily tasks like feeding herself with utensils, um, things that a lot of other moms, I guess, don't really have to teach their kids how to do. Like how do you place your hands when you're lifting up a bowl to put it on the table? Like I had to do stuff like that. Or how do you, where do you place your hands to turn a doorknob? And so um, when we found out we were expecting our second child, Sarah, so that was another bout of infertility, I remember one day I had a particularly rough day with Felicity. She was a toddler and I was really pregnant and I was really tired. And I just was like, Lord, please don't give us another kid with problems. I kind of laugh now because you know how God can be teaching us something in his mysterious ways. And so um, we had no idea that the child I was carrying had a rare disease. No clue. I had a normal pregnancy, um, very healthy pregnancy. And... Uh, when Sarah was born is when we found out because she had her fingers were fused together. Her toes were fused together. She had really buggy eyes and a prominent forehead. She just looked different 
mm-hmm. and we knew something wasn't right. So when the medical team at the hospital speculated she had something called Apert syndrome, we're like, what the heck is that? We never heard of this before. So um, we did some research and we found that she would probably require about 20 to 60 surgeries in her lifetime. And that could be for anything. It could be mainly for her fingers and toes, um, ear, nose, and throat surgeries, dental surgeries, lots of stuff with the face because it's a craniofacial condition. So when, when that happened, it really shook my faith. I mean, I was really angry with God because I had two good friends who had babies the same week that Sarah was born. And of course they had healthy, happy, normal babies. And I was just like, why, why were we picked to be parents of a child that has this disability? We love her of course, but why, why does she have to have this specific odd rare disease? And you know, our whole family is going to be going through this journey of who knows what throughout her life. Um, and we knew that since her face was going to look different and she was going to have a lot of surgeries on her face that she would likely be ostracized from her peers as she got older, made fun of, um, left out, things like that. So it took me a good couple of weeks of really wrestling with, um, the God I thought I knew. And I had to come to a place where I saw myself kind of slipping into despair and, I felt like the Lord spoke to my heart and said, you have two choices. You can choose to be a victim or a victor. But if you choose victory, it can't come without the cross. And so it was just kind of a breakthrough for me. It was exactly what I needed to hear. It was um, something that gave me a lot of peace and a lot of clarity. And I realized that I had a choice and how I could live my life and how I could raise my children that I could either play the role of victim, poor me, you know, wallow in self-pity, or I could be like, you know what? I don't have all the answers to life's questions and that's okay. I can live within the mystery and still be content with what I have today. So um, it's a daily battle, but that's kind of where it began in terms of, I guess, my faith becoming deepened and strengthened and fortified uh, was through what we've been through with Sarah. Um, she has about 15 specialists. I drive to at least one of them daily. So it's exhausting. Um, but there are so many beautiful things that happen in these moments where I feel like I can't go on. I can't keep doing this. I'm going to burn out and everything. And, um, there are just days where Sarah will, she just encounters people. That's why I like that word encounter. She encounters people, mainly strangers, but it doesn't have to be, with just such receptivity. And she's just, she doesn't um, look at anybody as if they're weird or strange. She's not standoffish at all. She's very open. She's very loving. And she usually says or does exactly what that person needs. With I have no idea that they needed that. But they say that to me. Your daughter, Sarah, just brightened my day. She's exactly what I needed today. So, you know, there's always, um, I just say that life is bittersweet. And I think that that's true for everything. That there's this juxtaposition of of, um, sorrow mingling with joy if we are really walking that Christian walk. Absolutely. And, you know, uh, it's very hard for listeners to see this right now, but I encourage you to go to... uh, Jeannie's website, which is genieewing.com, and uh, just the homepage, look at it. I mean, you, you have um, this beautiful family with all joyful smiles on their face. Um, and, and I think that, you know, uh, you know I, I, I'm listening to you talk about the pain and about the suffering and everything, and I'm looking at this picture on your website, Jeannie, and I'm going, oh my gosh, you know, I, I, you know, I, I just can't even imagine it because you got this beautiful, um, you got this beautiful picture of your family there. And yeah, that's really kind. And I have to say, though, you know, pictures can be deceiving. Certainly, those are snapshots of moments of our yes. life, but we struggle. I mean, there's a lot of days where my husband and I are just completely depleted at the end of the day. There are many days or even weeks, I would say even recently, where I just have no idea what's going on with Sarah. I have to kind of like grasp at straws and really rely on God's providence to figure out and give me the wisdom to know um, what direction should we be taking with her care. So 
I don't want that to deceive people into thinking, oh, we have this picture perfect family. There are moments like that. that, that <laughs> yeah. That's very, um, it is authentic, yes. but it's not all the time, certainly. No, no, um, you know, I mean, and, and, and understanding disability, I think, is really one of the, one of the areas in the church that really lacks, and I, I, and I applaud you for speaking out about it. Um, as, a, as somebody who uh, is disabled, you know, my, myself, and, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to have this pity party for yourself, and, and, mm-hmm. and so it's wonderful to hear that, you know, uh, you know that, that Sarah has this joy that, that in, you know, brings people uh, together, and, and, and through that word of encounter that you mentioned, um, you know, and, and as she grows up, and as she uh, continues to bring joy in, in, in situations, um, and, and surprise you and others, um, are, are, are you finding that, that, um, you know, that gives you you just this incredible, strange hope out there? Yeah, it does. Um, I think really the way I see the world and see people is so different than it used to be. Um, my worldview has shifted greatly. I mean, we live in such a, an uncertain and tumultuous culture and it can actually even be very hostile, especially to Christians. Um, but there are, like I said, these snapshots or snippets every day, whether it's really, really small or something that's obviously God's providence, that he worked all these details out that could not have possibly been a coincidence. But I'm talking about things that maybe sound kind of trite, but really do um, remind me that God is with me and with my family, that he loves every detail of our lives. Things like um, in nature specifically. I mean, my oldest daughter, Felicity, really loves nature too. But for instance, let me just tell you about this. She's um, going into her second grade year. So this is a big year sacramentally for her. She um, recently said to me, mom, you know, I was thinking if all of us are flowers in God's garden, every time we sin, it's like a petal falls off. And I'm like, wow, I mean, that's theology from a seven-year-old. I didn't directly teach her that. It was something that she has grown to understand through her, you know, the formation of her own faith, through her own personal prayers, through the books that she reads, um, and through spending a lot of time outside. She loves flowers. She always has. So those are things that like sound really simple and maybe sound, maybe even oversimplified, but it they truly do give me that hope, that glimmer and glimpse of hope that's there around us all the time yeah how beautiful uh for our listeners uh we are talking with uh Jeannie ewing uh catholic speaker author um and mom and uh we have to take a short break here uh, 13 minutes always flies by <laughs> when we do this <laughs> sure uh, especially talking with you uh so take a short break here and when we come back we'll continue to talk with you about uh all the amazing work and uh things you're doing uh to take uh this story from uh tragedy to triumph so right back after these messages here on young catholics respond this is martha fernandez sardina with your love minute brought to you by rememberyouareloved.com there are several obstacles to love that i want you to be aware of if you do not have a good relationship with god it is likely that you will not receive the love of god the way that he intends to give it to you If you have a limited knowledge of God and you do not know him as a merciful, compassionate, close, personal God who wishes to accompany you on earth and have you with him for all eternity, or if you conceive of God as harsh, judgmental, rigid, you are surely not going to receive the love, the tender, merciful love of God. Or if you have a wrong image of yourself, if you do not see what God sees when he looks at you, you will not receive the love of God. You will not see that he smiles upon you and sees that you are very good. And thirdly, if you are busy, it is unlikely that you will receive the fullness of God's love. So slow down, get to know yourself, get to know God. For more on love, find us at facebook.com slash remember you are loved. And remember, you are loved. Judy Hare was a bankrupt, homeless, drug-addicted college dropout on the brink of divorce, but is now a seminary graduate and devoted wife and mother of four children. What happened? Find out in her autobiography, Shattered, How God Restored My Heart and Life. Her journey of faith has been called brutally honest, truly inspiring, profound, heartbreaking, and life-changing. 
Shattered is available now for only $15 on her website, judyhair.com, on amazon.com, or at your local Catholic bookstore. As Judy says, it is never too late to become the person you deserve and desire to be. So stop wishing for change and start doing something about it by reserving your copy of Shattered Today. The Contemplative Stations of the Cross audio devotional is now available from Patchwork Heart Ministry. This devotional features an introduction and overview of the theology, history, and spirituality of the Stations of the Cross by Father Bill Zimmer, a priest of the Archdiocese of Chicago, along with an audio version of the Contemplative Stations of the Cross led by author Bill Snyder and the Stabat Mater, chanted in Latin by Marissa Ellison. CDs are $7.99 and digital downloads are only $3.99. Copies may be purchased by visiting patchworkheart.org or calling 424-704-3278. That's 424-704-3278. Your heart is always beating, but you never have to think about it. Welcome back to Young Catholics Respond. Once again, Bill Snyder. Welcome back to this episode of Young Catholics Respond. I'm Bill Snyder. My guest is Jeannie Ewing, Catholic uh, author, speaker. And uh, we're having just a wonderful conversation about her journey of faith um, and really her daily, um, her daily walk with, with, with God and with disability and her family um, and having children with disabilities. And so I kind of want to pick up that conversation right there, Jeannie, and talking about, you know, us as Catholics, how do we um, help elevate and um, and support other families going through uh, difficulties with you know with a day to day caretaking situation like like you are experiencing? Yeah, that's a question I get a lot when we're talking in general about grief. I would say a lot of people say what what is helpful and what is not helpful. And what I found in my conversations with people and in my own experience is the gift of accompaniment. It's a lot like Pope Francis talks about. So the moral support, the presence of a person sitting with you, listening, just saying, hey, I'm here for you. I don't know what this is like for you. What do you need right now? And then um, being available when that person needs a babysitter, like I do sometimes, or sometimes it's, you know, having that conversation, like this is a gift that I feel I have, or I feel called to share this with you. So it's, how do you put your the works of mercy in action? So you have to kind of look, A, look at your, your gifts and talents and your abilities. Like, what am I able to do right now? I can't offer to just do anything for this person because that's not realistic. And uh, most of the time, they're not going to just c come to me and ask. That's not what caregivers do. We don't usually reach out and say, hey, can you do this for me? If we have something specific, like I'm able to provide a meal for you once a week during surgeries. That's very specific. Or I'm able to provide two hours of babysitting twice a week. So if if someone comes up to you with that, that's helpful. It's also helpful to just have someone stop by with a care package and just say, hey, I'm here for a couple hours. What can I do? And for us as caregivers, it's it requires a lot of humility to just say, oh, let's see. I really need my dishes done. Or can you help me clean the house or something? So um, those are what's really helpful. It's really just being receptive to the Holy Spirit in terms of what he's calling you to do and recognizing the needs that, that those of us who are caregivers and um, those of us who have family members with disabilities, that we, we often feel lonely and isolated. And so just having someone reach out and say, I recognize that this is hard for you and I want you to know that I'm here and this is how I can be there for you. That is just such a relief. It takes off so much pressure from us. So I guess those are specific tips I would give to listeners that might be wondering what they can do. That's really awesome. That's, you know, I mean, and that's really practical too. I mean, you know, think about your gifts and talents and if you can help in a, in a certain situation, reach out and be proactive uh, because, because I know um, that, that I would appreciate that, <laughs> you know, just as somebody who, uh, who, or I would have appreciated that as a, as a kid struggling with this. 
And I know that I do appreciate those who did make the effort uh, mm-hmm. throughout my childhood for sure. And, uh, and, and I know my parents did as well. Um, I, I definitely want to, uh, you know, do a little bit of transition here because, because uh, you do so much work, um, you know, reaching out, writing books, uh, speaking and talking about this. And, and you've launched a brand new project with uh, a speaker we had on last week on our uh, podcast, uh, or, or mu- musician and speaker, Anna Nuzzo. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, and you're getting ready to release this awesome CD with her. And also uh, go on like a little bit of a speaking tour with her. So do you want to talk a little bit about that and, and, and how people can, and also how people can bring you out to the parishes? Right. So I met Anna at a Catholic marketing conference a couple of years ago. Um, we just both kind of felt like maybe we were supposed to connect again. So I went out to her parish and spoke at her grace group a few months ago. It was like literally four months ago. And I stayed at her house and we just really connected and it was totally the Holy Spirit because while I was there, she's like, I've always felt like I'm supposed to write this prayer to St. Michael. And I was like, wow, I really feel like um, some of my stories should be put to music. And while I was there, she started tinkering around and she basically had the basic melody of the St. Michael prayer song. And from that point on, she and I kept in touch and it was just like really fast that this project came together. So Amazing Mercy is going to be um, a CD of stories and songs that are supposed to be healing and helpful for people that are in a really rough spot. So it's going to feature um, new songs. I'm sure Anna's talked about this. So new songs from Anna. And then I'm going to have stories that correspond with each of those songs. Or you could look at it the other way around. Her her songs will correspond with my stories. So we're doing a live event called Amazing Mercy, same thing. And basically, we'll just go to parishes and I will I will give the candid live versions of these stories. And there are actually some other stories that we did not use on the CD that I would likely use. Um, are intended to kind of help people meditate and kind of process how this applies to their own life and how it can deepen their their um, prayer life. We really want this to reach people at a deep level, at a, a level that will um, inspire them, that will encourage them, and also help them in their journey of suffering and struggle and grief. So in order to book the event, people can go to Anna's website or mine. Hers is annanuzo.com. Mine is genieewing.com. I don't know if you like link those or something on your podcast, yes. but yep, they'll be in the bottom. Okay. So that's how people can find out more information. We have a flyer that corresponds with the event, and then we're happy to answer any specific questions people might have. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, when is the CD planning on being released? This fall. Oh, awesome. Excellent. So just in time for the holidays. That, that Anna was really excited about that. She's like, yay, this would be a perfect gift. So Yes, it will. Absolutely. Um, and, and you want to just, uh, talk a little bit about the, about how you guys came up with the title of it. Honestly, Bill, it was truly inspired by the Holy Spirit. I mean, every time Anna would send me like a rough draft of her song that she's like, yeah, I wrote this a couple years ago. And I would instantly remember like a really powerful story that happened in my past that I just forgot about. And so, um, Amazing Mercy is actually the title of one of her songs on the CD. But the reason we decided on that to be the title of the actual album is that we feel like mercy is really the message that the world needs right now. God's mercy, divine mercy. And that that corresponds directly with healing, with the healing of our wounds and our brokenness. And um, that's where we want to reach people at that level so that they feel their hearts penetrated with God's mercy and that they experience his healing. Beautiful, beautiful. And uh, Jeannie, I know that uh, we only have a few minutes left, but I, but I know that you uh, also have some, some wonderful uh, books to talk about, uh, you know, from, uh, from grief to grace and some other excellent books that really can talk about, you know, taking this journey with people through their spiritual life. Uh, do you want to just maybe talk a little bit about those as we wrap up and just, you know, uh, how, how people can reach out to you as well? Because uh, you seem so open uh, and and so, um, you know, able to, to help people through through life's uh, most difficult problems. Yeah, I'm happy to answer 
any emails that people send me, I really appreciate and I'm humbled by people's stories. So they can certainly email me. Um, my website, again, is genieewing.com and people can contact me that way. My books, there are so many that either are out or coming out. I would just say you can browse my website. Most of them deal with grief. I have a devotional. I have a meditation journal for caregivers. From Grief to Grace is kind of my magnum opus to date. But that's kind of a, I would say, a primer that has to do with um, the spiritual principles to, of navigating grief. And so there are specific ones that I list in there. And then I also have waiting with purpose, which is how do we make the most of the times of waiting, the seasons of waiting in our life? What does God want to teach us? Then um, there's a book coming out with Tan. I'm not sure when it's coming out. It's in editing right now. But that's uh, Parenting with the Beatitudes. And then I also wrote a short grief devotional for our Sunday visitor that's coming out sometime early next year. So those are the projects I have. And if anybody has any questions or they want more information about my books or they just want to share their stories or need a prayer, I'm happy to, to uh, respond. Awesome. Uh, Jeannie, uh, I really appreciate uh, your time today on Young Catholics Respond. Talking with you, uh, it is it is eye-opening. It is refreshing. Um, I, I don't get to have a, a conversation like this quite often. So I appreciate that, and I appreciate all your hard work and what you're doing uh, to uplift families and, uh, and, and, and lead them closer to, to, to Christ through the cross. Yeah, you bet. Same with you, Bill. Thank you for what you're doing, too. Awesome. Well, this has been an episode of Young Catholics Respond here on Patchwork Heart Radio. Until next time, from all of us here at Patchwork Heart Ministry, I'm Bill Snyder. Keep beating to your Catholic heart. This has been an episode of Young Catholics Respond. For more information about our program or to be a guest, visit patchworkheart.org, email info at patchworkheart.org, or call 424 704 3278. That's 424 704 3278. Do you want to keep your finger on the pulse of Patchwork Heart Ministry? Follow our monthly blog written on our hearts. Simply go to patchworkheartministry.blogspot.com and click subscribe and follow the on screen instructions. That's Patchwork Heart Ministry dot blogspot dot com then click subscribe the words spoken by our lady of guadalupe to juan diego nearly 500 years ago are almost too good to be true asking that a temple will be built at the site of her apparition she promised that here i will give all my love my compassion my help and my protection to all those who love me cry to me seek me and who have confidence in me here I will listen to their weepings and alleviate all their sufferings, necessities, and misfortunes. My name is Alan Napleton and I live in Dallas, Texas. I have visited her shrine in Mexico City dozens of times, bringing my own petitions and have found Our Lady to be true to her word. Over the years I have brought hundreds of pilgrims to this holy place without incidents and have now founded Viva Guadalupe, a nonprofit that provides safe and inexpensive pilgrimages to Our Lady's shrine. If you would like to take our Blessed Mother up on her promise and learn more about how you can visit this special place of grace, please visit vivaguadalupe.org for more information. Subscribe to the Patchwork Heart Radio Podcast. We are available on the Apple Podcast, Podbean, TuneIn, Stitcher, and AHA Radio mobile apps by searching for Patchwork Heart Radio. You can also visit patchworkheart.podbean.com to subscribe and listen to every episode of Young Catholics Respond, inspirational talks, and other Catholic media content. Thanks for listening and being a part of our heart. Faith comes from what is heard, and what is heard comes by the preaching of Christ. But I ask, have they not heard? Do you seek to make scripture a greater part of your daily faith journey? Would you like it readily available on your smartphone or tablet? 
The Truth and Life Bible app delivers to your mobile device the complete Catholic edition of the Revised Standard Version of the Bible with a concordance entirely free. You will also enjoy free content from Father Robert Barron's Word on Fire, Father Jim McElhone's Word Made Clear, Jeff Caven's The Great Bible Adventure, and the Catholic News Agency. In addition, you can hear the Gospel of Mark dramatically proclaimed by world-renowned actors and actresses like Blair Underwood, Neil McDonough, Kristen Bell, and many more. The full audio dramatization of the New Testament, along with the Ignatius Study Bible, can be purchased within the app. It is available on the App Store, Google Play, Amazon Kindle, and at DownloadJesus.com.